I'm Ryan. I'm Alex. I'm Curtis. I'm Ben. I'm Dan. I'm Arya. And I'm Matt, and we are Pigpen Theater Company. Uh, there is nothing more interesting than something that is just out of sight. And that's the most important lesson we've learned as a theater company. Uh, there's a photo that we took together. Uh, I believe it's in your programs. It looks a little something like this. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Now, uh, what could we be looking at that could possibly inspire such terror, or apparently, in Arya's case, complete and absolute joy? <laughs> it must be terrifying. Uh, perhaps it was the knowledge that we would be giving this TED Talk soon. Uh, it could be anything, but what it was, in fact, was the wall of the apartment in which we took that photograph. Ah, uh, but don't you wish you could go back to the time when you didn't know that? Wasn't that more interesting? The idea of keeping something just out of sight is central to all great storytelling. It's, uh, it's what keeps you watching. It's what keeps you leaning forward. It keeps you guessing. Um, when a story is good, the act of watching it unfold is essentially a creative one. You're given a certain amount of information about the characters, the events, the setting, and then you're left to fill in the blanks with whatever's bouncing around inside your own head. As a group of storytellers, our goal is to provide a space for audiences to engage with their imaginations. Um, as they said already, uh, the seven of us met at Carnegie Mellon University in 2007. Um, our freshman year, we came together to write a short play for our school's uh, festival. So we booked a rehearsal room, uh, we got a bunch of chairs together, and like a let's get down to business circle, and we tried to figure out how seven playwrights were gonna write a play. But we immediately found that we like telling stories on the grand scale. So uh, epic journeys, vast landscapes, um, unlikely uh, heroes forced to reckon with titanic monsters and catastrophic natural disasters and fire and lightning and then fire breathing lightning. Um, <laughs> but we didn't have any money. We were in college after all. So uh, what we did is we actually ended up falling back on a lot of the techniques and materials that you use growing up as kids playing pretend. Um, mattresses and bed sheets, cardboard, uh, clip lights, musical instruments, basically anything we could find in our dorms. Um, in the beginning, we kind of thought of these resources as the limits of our ability to give life to our ideas. But after a few rehearsals, we realized that they actually gave us a lot more freedom than ever. It's safe to say that all of us gave our best performances when we were five years old. Uh, Five-year-olds can brandish a stick at a cul-de-sac and suddenly he's fighting a dragon. The dragon's nowhere to be seen, but that scene is unmistakable. So, with that in mind, we began to develop our aesthetic based around our limitations and around the principle that we can engage our audience by inviting their imaginations to work in the same way ours did in the rehearsal room. The key to our kind of storytelling is to boil things down to their essence. Uh, any image, any emotion, any theatrical idea can be pared down to a small bite-sized part that can give the impression of the whole. And there are a few tools that we found that are very useful in this process. One of them is uh, music. Music can be incredibly visual. Uh, after all, you don't need to see a giant shark in order to conjure a picture of Jaws in your minds. You just need to hear two notes. Music can communicate emotions that might have taken a lengthy monologue to slog through. ideas like the passing of time. Music can take you to a new place instantly. Without any visual indication whatsoever, we can recreate the turbulence of a storm at sea. Another one of our favorite tools happens to be puppetry which can really refer to any sort of focused manipulation of an object. Puppetry opens up worlds of possibilities for the way that we can interpret space and scale. Now, shadow puppetry especially has allowed us to create huge panoramas on the stage that expand our playing space well beyond the walls of the theater.
We've also been pleasantly surprised at how far people are willing to suspend their disbelief when they're watching puppetry. With the slightest suggestion of shape or character, an audience is able to fill in the characteristics they can't see. For instance, an empty bleach bottle and a mop head can become a dog. Oh, hey there. Uh, an arm and some paper can become a beautiful swan. And a human hand can become a bunny rabbit. Now, mechanically, these are incredibly simple. But when used in the context of a story, can become powerfully evocative and often quite surprising. Lights, or the absence of light, can be used in a whole variety of ways. As a way to direct your focus somewhere on stage. As a paintbrush to color a scene. Even as a sort of makeup to transform ourselves into different characters. Whoa! <laughs> so when it all comes together, the music, the lighting, the puppetry, we're able to elevate the individually simple elements to new levels of complexity while maintaining enough just out of sight for the audience to play along. This next sequence you're about to see is actually from our show, The Old Man and the Old Moon. Um, and it features the old man of the title in the aftermath of a shipwreck at sea. As he struggles to stay afloat, his mind begins to wander to the memories of his wife. We were all cast into the sea like skipping stones. The old man went over starboard and we went over port. And before a man of us could tell which was the sky and which was the sea, we were all swimming in one or the other for our lives. There, across the broken hull of our once sturdy ship, just make out the hands of our captain as he disappeared beneath the waves. He sank down, 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 and down, far beyond the reach of the moon's light, beyond the reach of the sun's light even, had it been day. As he sank, he stared up at the hole in the sky where once had been the moon. I'm sorry. Isn't it just like the sea to come between you and me? Water you'd be as I watched with anxiety. You'd say don't These might seem very familiar, and it's because these are all time-tested ideas in theater. But in the six years of work together, these are the things that continue to spark our imaginations. And as we develop our work further, these are the things that we've started making a shorthand. So we employ these devices, and we can, we can figure out problems in the rehearsal room quickly. And any group that's together long enough can develop their own vocabulary 
And we have found that to be the greatest virtue of working as an ensemble. But our ensemble is changing every night. Every time we open the doors to a new audience, we're really meeting a new group of collaborators for the first time. Uh, and the show can change immeasurably uh, depending on what the audience takes or gives to each performance. Uh, it's easy to forget the creative role that an audience can play when it engages with a performance. Every time we put on a show, we're trying to remind audiences of that role and to inspire them with the same creative spark that has given our lives so much happiness. So in conclusion, uh, what is that? Whoa. Whoa. oh no, it's cool. It's, it's gone now. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot.